The Small Business Show, episode 202, for Wednesday, December 19th, 2018. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show that is BFA Small Business here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And out on the West Coast, I am Shannon Jean. How are you? I am. Uh, it's crazy, man. <laughs> it's crazy. Like the, it is. Yeah, it's good though. Uh, you it's know, that time of year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. I, I thought things would slow down this week, and I, eventually they will because sure. you know, with the holiday coming up. But yeah, that yeah. has not been the case yet, and that's a like that is not a complaint by any stretch of the imagination. That's a really good thing, you know, because there's a lot of planning happening for Q1 and actually yeah, beyond. Yeah. So like we've seen years in the past in fact 2017 was one of them where december was quiet i mean it wasn't that quiet but relatively yeah, speaking it was quiet and i was like yeah we no, always take uh yeah and and i mean i think there's lots of opportunity at the end of the year we've i've talked about this on the show if you if you don't have your physical year end on december 31st there's a lot of opportunity uh uh, to take advantage of, uh, especially if you're in the inventory business, because there's lots of people that want to dump inventory before the end of the year. Right. And if you have your fiscal year at another, maybe the end of January or whatever, uh, you can then buy those things up and take advantage of. Uh, do, do you for, intentionally for set your fiscal years to be not up in sync with the calendar year because of that? I used to. Yeah, yeah. because of that. Cause when we were buying massive, massive amounts of inventory, I'm not doing that anymore. Right, um, right. At least not that those kind of products. And there was beneficial. And then, but over time, you know, what I, I found is that the year calendar wasn't as important as the earnings calendar right for for public companies so we you know you'd get a call a few you know a week or so before uh earnings started being released by these big companies oh. that needed to kind of shore up maybe or not have this dead inventory on their books or they wanted to add you know uh increase revenue so they had a few million dollars worth of you know well it could be more, it could yeah, be less, right, but right. a lot of stuff that they wanted to generate cash flow. Um, and, and they were very like, Hey, just, you know, let's do a deal. You don't have to pay us. We just need to book it into our, uh, accounts receivable. Yeah. So yeah, it was kind of yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah. So it makes sense. But, it makes uh, sense. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, well, Hey, so today we, uh, you know, uh, we're going to talk about something interesting that near and <laughs> near to both of our hearts, I think. Yeah. Uh, so if, if you're a small business owner, chances are like, you know, Dave and I, you like things to be done a certain way that, that, Maybe that's why you don't work for someone else, right? And, it is totally uh, why I don't work for someone else. <laughs> Me yeah. too. Well, because yeah. it, I and also you know I like to go at at my speed, right? So yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And yep. at your time. Yeah, I, for me, it's my time too. If exactly. I want to push through and power through all night, and maybe then have a different schedule the next day, that could be great. And and I think it's a really powerful trait, and it pushes you to succeed because you want to do your own thing. But it also can easily kind of turn you into a micromanager. Uh, you know, when it comes to employees, contractors, even partners, you know, you can kind of go over the top. So oh, yeah. today, you know, I know you wanted to talk about this topic and I thought that's a great time. And I thought we would, we talk about uh, how we can avoid being micromanagers. And I know one of your concerns is, you know, at the same time, being sure things are getting done, that people are creative and embracing change and, and not getting stagnant. Well, that's, um, so that's the thing is yeah. I've, I've learned, you, you know, as, as many of you know, I had an employee leave me earlier this year that surprised me. That has turned out to be a, a huge benefit. Not that, that's great. that, not that there was anything wrong with the way oh, he yeah. did anything, but I don't like to be a micromanager. In fact, I tell everybody that works for me when they come to work for me that I don't like to be a micromanager, but I know that I have those tendencies. And so right. the best thing for both of us is if you do your job, then I don't have to micromanage you and then we're all good because I don't want to micromanage you. You don't want to be micromanaged. So let's avoid that together. And the and that's great. I mean, it, you know, because humans don't yeah. generally like that. But what what has happened to me uh, and I need to fix is that I avoid too much of that. And in doing so, I, and, you know, and, and with the things that have happened this year, I sort of realized it because I have been able to, you know, one of the blessings of someone leaving and, and you having to do their job is you get to do their job. 
right? Right, sure. <laughs> and for someone that had been doing the same job for a decade plus, uh, not that things had stagnated, but things didn't evolve the way that I would have evolved them. You know, knowing what I know about the industry and things and, and all of that, they evolved in in a way that he evolved them. And it it turns out it wasn't enough. And I take full blame for that because it's like, right. oh, you know, right. Of course not. I, I didn't push him to do these things. And of course, the reason is because I edge on the side of not wanting to micromanage people. But I right. have to. And so for me. Not like the prioritizing, not micromanaging people has led to the company not evolving uh, at the pace that it could or should have or that I would have wanted it to. Uh, and we've fixed a lot of that now. It's, it's actually great. But That's awesome. yeah, but I, going forward, you know, I really want to foster uh, an environment of of what, what I'll call you know, perpetual change, right? Perpetual yeah, that's evolution. Awesome. That's right. But, that's right. But that's a scary, like, but how do you do that? For, there's two problems with that. Number one, how do you do that? How do you get involved in, like, part of that change comes from, let me see how you do your job. Ooh, I have an idea. Like, that's real close to micromanaging, right? No, <laughs> I, know? I, I think there's, and, and I think we're going to solve this today. Okay. Uh, and then, I, I'm, just gonna, yeah. I'm just going to say yep. the other, the other part of, of that is oh, where was I going with this? So is I is you know, I don't want to micromanage people, but also like people employees tend to like stability, right? And working right. somewhere that's constantly changing too much may be a scary thought, right? So so Absolutely. this is the thing that I I really want to solve, and I know I'm not alone here. So here we go. No, you're right. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that uh, those are those are really important things. And uh, your take on it, it's interesting that, oh, you know, I'm so concerned about being a micromanager. I, I err on the on the side of letting it go too long before I get involved. Right. right. And that, right. I think that's a very common thing, too. Um, and uh, leaving things alone. And I, I think that one of the important parts and I'm kind of pick your words apart a little oh, bit. Please here do. And, and, no, yeah, this is great. Me, yeah. Is when, if, if you make a comment to yourself or if, especially to an employee, Hey, I don't want to micromanage. So, you know, something along the lines, I'm, I'm only going to get involved if I, if things aren't working or it's not going the, the way I think it is. I think that kind of sets you up uh, to your employees like, oh, okay, so if the uh, boss gets calls me, I know something's yeah. not right or whatever. Yep. So I think the way an important uh, framework for this conversation for every employee or team member, partner, whoever it is, is that you say, look, I, I don't like to micromanage. So what I want to set up is uh, defined you know, points where we check in on projects and we both get a chance to discuss it, criticize, comment in a them. And, and that's the first thing you start getting them to that adapting and accepting that we're going to change this stuff together all the time. Yeah. And all together. Yeah. And you're going to be a part of it, not just, you know, well, I'm going to come and sit and say, no, 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 no. It's going to be like, well, what works and what doesn't? And like, I would always ask my employees like, well, you're going to get, or I would tell them you're going to get bored of this over time yeah if we do it the same way over and over so be prepared that we're both going to be looking for ways to change things up and re-energize ourselves and all, and all and all that kind of stuff so i think the the way you uh kind of couch it and the framework you put it in yep. from the beginning even if it's not a new employee but uh, yeah, that's no, a great opportunity sure. it, yeah. right and, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. so so let, let's talk about why micromanaging is a quote bad thing right no, and and i put some points down i'm sure you have some comments or can expand on that and my my thing is the the one thing that i think is the worst about it is it I think it shows people that you don't have confidence in them. Right. Yeah. It communicates and, a lack of trust. Yeah. yeah. And that really trickles down and out throughout your entire organization and makes people afraid to make decisions. Uh, and I, I think one of the ways around that part is you could say, look, uh, I'll, I'll back up every decision you make. I always want you to make a decision, but I, I do reserve the right to critique it just like I would like you to critique my decisions. Because from that critique is how you learn, right? Yep, of course. And 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 so again, it's a lot of it is just setting those baseline 
things. And most of it I, I found happens during casual conversations. Totally. Not, yeah. yeah. Not, you know, let's have a meeting and talk about this because people kind of zone out, you know, but when you're in the hallway or you're talking about a thing, Hey, let's do this. And you know, those little, you drop those tidbits, I think, I think are powerful. Um, the, the second thing I think micromanaging does is it kind of creates this tunnel vision where your ideas are the only thing. Right. Right. And That's, or, yeah. And you don't get the benefit no. of these, these these other brains that you have. Talented around. people that yeah. obviously they're talented if you hired them. Right. Right. Or, you know, whatever. I brought them into your organization or partnered with them or they're contracted with them. And so if if your idea is the only thing out there and you're managing every aspect of it, you might as well just do it yourself. Yep. Right. Yep. And, and it's <laughs> you you'll re, you'll hit a wall uh, and, and it's not going to be as good for you. Uh, you know, as well. Um, and, and I think like we're talking about here, it, it hurts your performance. You know, you're going to, you you won't be happy and you're not going to know why if you're micromanaging, these people are not going to be, you know, change agents and embracing all this stuff. Because I think, you know, one more thing that inhibits embracing change is that somebody's always looking over your shoulder. Um, yeah. People, need, be, to, people it, need to have the, the uh, freedom to make a mistake. I mean, that, yep. that's the reality of it because you, you don't like you don't get progress without mistakes like that. Yeah, I know absolutely. that. So, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. why we ask that question. Every guest that comes on, you know, yeah. we always say, well, what's the best mistake you've ever made? Because I want to learn from your mistake, just like I learned from my own. So, and, and I've never you know, we've never had a guest at a, you know. Uh, or 200 shows say, well, you know, I don't really know. I haven't yeah. made I no, mean, all of them. every yeah. one of them. is like, oh, yeah, I make mistakes all the time. You know, of right? course, yeah. of course. It, it, it's that if, as you know, as a small business owner, as an entrepreneur, it's not the mistake. It's the it's how you recover from it. Right. right. And the ability to recover and to persevere. Uh, and we've talked about some pretty big mistakes on the show. We, we should do a clip, do clips of and distribute a oh, show all about the idea. mistakes. Yeah. yeah. And because everybody gets down, you know, I screwed up and I'm in this, you know, oh, man, how am I going to get through it? You will get through it. And that's what really is makes you successful. Um, and and. That micromanaging, it discouraged people from making decisions. They don't want to do it because they know they're going to get called out on it. Uh, and and that really holds back your your people. Yeah. Um, and, and I think, and again, to go back, I think so. So those are my take on what's really bad about it. And I, I would be the first to admit I have this problem, too, because I want. Of course, you things do. <laughs> a certain way, everything from, well, I want the logo to look like this and I want this article to say this and I want the the voice me. Uh, the big part is how do we interact with customers and our employees that the, the voice of the company, the message, you know, I'm, I'm a uh, just a psycho about that stuff. But I, but I've learned to to give up a bit uh as I've gotten some perspective on things and, and, you know, I'm involved in a, a new company right now where I've really tried to take a back seat and, uh, agree more, you know, <laughs> even if I was like, well, that's not how I would have done it, but that's, that's okay. You know, right. and, and to realize that that's okay. Um, but so, so I think that, you know, rather than micromanage, I think you just, you need to delegate the work and set up clearly defined checkpoints along the way to see how things are going. And, and then you can nudge and persuade things. To, and it sounds bad, but it no, works. But that's what uh, you're doing, of course. Yeah, you're yeah. persuading things to go in a particular direction if you feel the need. And I think in that case, and this is even going to sound worse, but the people that you're nudging and persuading, per, perhaps they don't even know. That that's sure. what you're doing. Sure. If you're good at it, if yeah. you're good at it. Yeah, you get better and, at and, it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And and it's not, you're not doing anything bad or treating them poorly, but you know, you're like, Hey, I, I want this person to have this idea or I want them to pick this color. I want them to do these things. So you got to kind of set it up. Right. Uh, well, you, and, I mean, it's and, sales, you know, right? You're doing this all the time sales. anyway. Yep. It's a, it's a, yeah. It's like your two week <laughs> trial base. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Which I love, you know, it's so great. It's only two weeks. It's only two weeks. Um, so, yeah. Five so, years later. What, that's right. We're still doing it. So yeah. if you set up the, you know, the, the key is to set the, uh, the, the check-in times up front. So your the people are prepared so that you're going to step in and say, look, every Thursday we're going to meet or whatever it is every yeah. other Thursday. And, uh, you're going to see how things are going. And, 
But in between the time, don't keep asking them how things are going and right. avoid the temptation to send an email and say, oh, I saw this partial thing and I didn't like, no, 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 no. Wait and check in yeah, with them. I, I think you're right. to, to, to dissect a little bit, you know, you yeah. keep talking about clearly defined checkpoints. Those are for you, not for oh, your yes. employee. If your no, employees no, no. have yes. questions or problems. They're going to be and should be free to come to you. These are yes. these are yes. to restrain you. That's right. Yeah. This this is to fix you as the micromanager. Yes. <laughs> the employees, if they need help, they're going to come to you no matter what. Right. That's, as they they're should. Gonna, I'm, right. As they should. I'm stuck on this, on that. But you're trying to give them. Uh, uh, well, I think the key here is autonomy. And yeah. to let them have some sense yeah. of ownership uh, on, on this project or, you know, whatever it is. And, you know, I think your point, Dave, is really important. And I never really thought of it this way until you brought it up is that, um, OK, so I'm not going to micromanage. I'm not going to be there. But then how do you avoid the stagnation, which is a weird word? But, yeah, you know, it's this, the wrong the, word, but it's but yeah. it, it gets the job done. Yeah. 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 They get stuck in a rut or they or they're afraid of change. You know, we talk about it on the or small business show all the time. Where things are. Yeah. Like, uh, that's the I, I, I deleted that word. I put in my notes. Don't get comfortable because it seems such a uh, management trick. But all of us, if we get too comfortable, right, it's uh, we we don't produce our best. No, you got to have a little bit of drive. You got to have yeah. something that scares you a little yeah, bit. Your edge, yeah. whether it's I'm not making money. I'm not uh, I'm not going to make this deadline, uh, whatever, whatever it is. Find it. And, and you you. You know, you bring that up and it's, and I never really put the, the both of them together, um, but I think it's really important and, and it is, is a great topic. Um, we yeah, did a my, whole show. My problem, and, yeah. and this is going to sound terrible, but my problem is I, I, I guess we all do this. Maybe uh, here I am doing never it. Know, never know. Never know. I don't know. No, <laughs> is that I, I like I get frustrated when people don't think the way I think. Right. And, you know, I, yeah. I get I'm, it maybe frustration. That's a result of it. I'm surprised. It's like, oh, how come? How did you not see that? Oh, my God. Right. You know, and that's the problem is without these check ins, you yeah. know, you've got someone that is truly doing their best. Yes. And in some ways, that's going to be better than what your best would have been. Right. Like, well, like, totally. Yeah. It's different. And, and I, I, but yes, but they will miss out on. Some of the things that, you know, they just don't see. Right. You see it differently and you're like, oh, my gosh, how are you still doing it this way? Like this is either inefficient or really bad. Like it drives me. I'm an efficiency maniac and it drives me crazy, like more far more than it should when I'm working with someone or someone's working for me and they're doing something that clearly they do all the time. And it's like, you know. There's a way to make that happen in one tenth the time. Right. Can, can I show you? No one wants to hear the, that phrase. Right. Can I show you? Yeah. Like, I, in, you in, know, in that in that setting. No. Like, yeah. Yeah. But maybe during the check in. And yeah, during I would the say check -in, sure. Yeah. What, one of the one of the things you just said, I think probably makes you a, a, a very good person to work for is that you said, you know, my way. You didn't necessarily say the best way. Right. No, it's because true. You're not, I know you're it's not, not sure. Best, right? Yeah. It is a different way that you think, hey, what if, you know, what if or how about and uh, maybe the way to to approach those things is when you have those check ins is maybe you kind of have a, a list of things, possibilities or what ifs. But you really know the one you want to pick. Right. Right. And you're like, well, maybe we should have it work this way, you know, and, and to where, uh, again, it's a persuasion trick, but, uh, you want those people to have buy-in. You don't want them to leave that meeting saying, well, I have to change this because this is the way Dave wants it done. Right. Maybe right. sometimes you have to do that. I don't, yes. don't want to get too, no, too some, soft on this thing. Sometimes, sometimes you have, you to, have to Correct. Yeah. 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 But if, but on, on other things, you know, it, it's more powerful if you, and this is going to sound terrible, if you let them believe it's their idea. Yes, the, the more powerful. Uh, totally. No, you, you yeah. like, you, yeah, you have to give them the uh, illusion of choice. 
Yes. Ah, oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> yes, it is true. It is true. And we could, I, I, we got to have Scott, uh, uh, Scott Adams on this yeah. show. He could talk about persuasion like us all the time because yeah. all of us are being persuaded every day, no matter what, whether it's marketing, right. people trying to get you to do things, whatever it is. Um, but uh, I think when it comes to not uh, at least appearing to be a micromanager, you need to put some effort into your persuasion techniques yeah, to get true. the buy in from people. People, and then they won't feel like they're being micromanaged. So it's, it's smart. So, so what you're saying right? is, yeah, keep like micromanage way more, but just hide it better. That's really it. Yeah. Be smart. Yeah. You know, th- well, I mean, maybe smart, but b- oh, think I, about persuasion. Yeah. yeah. And, and how you, because, you know, you walk in the every day and like I can, you know, remember walking in the office or you know, going through the lobby of our building and I would just look at certain things and be like, you know, I just don't really like that. <laughs> you know, whatever it is. Totally. But, yes. Yeah. But there's no way I'm going to walk in and be like, I don't like that. Somebody fix it. Yeah. You know? Have that, that removed. That, yeah. That is the worst. That's like some movie <laughs> character it's of a so boss. Cool. Right. It's but like I, I would certainly strange. walk in and go to the person that's in charge of that and go, hey, what do you think about uh how that it looks or what if we tried something new? Would you like to shift the lobby around? We used to have a whole wall of iPads, right? In the, in the thing. And when we first did it, I thought it looked fantastic. And then over time I was like, eh, now it's kind of cheesy. It's, you know, I don't know, whatever. It's, but it's getting, played. Yeah. Yeah. It's played. We had a, it had a lifespan. Right. And, uh, and then, you know, we t- so changed. So it, it, there's ways to do it. And I think persuasion and getting their buy-in, you may not get what you want right away or exactly what you want, but something is going to happen. Right. So, and, uh, and, I, and that's actually true, right? Because any, not any change, most change is better than not, right? Because it just evolves. Because you can realize, oh, this was a mistake and now I change it again and again and again. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, I, it, I it's think easy that's for us to thing. say that. I guess I guess I here's my 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 issue is I'm always putting myself in other people's shoes. Right. And I like in many cases, that's a good thing. But as we talk about here on the show all the time, not everyone thinks like a business owner. Right. In fact, yeah. the people you hire, it can sort of be. Uh, it can create some friction if you've got somebody that thinks like a business owner, you know. Oh, well, yeah. Want, they're not going to work for you very long. No, they're not. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Or you're going to give them the or, or, or maybe they'll take over the business. Right. Because so, you always right. need some sort of thing. That's great. That's yeah. true. That's true. But yeah. yeah but, you, you know, so and it took me it's taking me a long time it, uh, to really learn this. It took me a long time to even realize it that, oh, I can't treat you like I would want to be treated in this scenario. Not that I want to treat people poorly. It's not a binary thing. It's yes. I need to treat you the way you need to be treated in this scenario, not the way I would need to be treated in this scenario. Oh, that's a, that's really, a very good distinction. Right. That's a really yeah, hard yeah, yeah. thing, though, because yeah. I'm always feeling like I have too much empathy. I said something to a friend of mine yesterday. We were talking about something else. And I said, yeah, it'd be great if I could just have, you know, a good dose of sociopathy. Right. Like if I could get rid of all this pesky empathy, life would be so yeah. much easier. Uh, you know, in for the most part, I don't actually believe that. But in some scenarios, it's like, no, too much empathy. And you put yourself somewhere that you shouldn't be. You know, it's, it's yep. Just, yep. Yep. It doesn't work. It doesn't I think work. we need to do uh, we could do an entire episode on not putting yourself in your other people's shoes. It's yeah. People that work for you, especially because yeah. it, it's an it's like uh, apples and oranges. It's a different personality it's a different worldview um and and a lot of stuff that has backfired uh on me over the years has been because i thought they would want to hear how i would want to hear it or have a certain reaction the way i would you know or whatever and and they've it's gone the often the complete opposite where they get like upset with it. And I was like, wait, how could you get upset? Yeah, because this is so great here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so we're going to, we're going to pick that. We're going to pick that topic okay. up again and, yeah. and, uh, and, and discuss it. Um, and, and I think the, the underlying thing here, you know, on, on micromanaging, you know, those, you know, set check-ins where you're kind of held back, uh, using persuasion more to get what you want. Uh, you know, it doesn't sound right. It, it, you know, and, and also to make people get the, like, well, this is my idea. You're kind of pushing them, nudging them the way you want to go. But a lot, a lot of it is just how you communicate. And if you, if you're 
the structure of your business, if you're constantly discussing change, embracing new ideas as part of your communication, and then if you reward those people that take those risks that, that or someone who suggests something new, something different, it, it just reaffirms that kind of thing where people feel more comfortable making the decisions and embracing change without you being involved and you having to push it forward. Right. Um, and, and I think that's imp- uh, a really important thing, but it, it, you know, that, that getting people happy with that because people get complacent and it yes. is a challenge. So you have to remind them of that all the time. Well, and I will also say that, you know, you have to make sure you have the right people in involved. Um, yeah. Because if all it takes is one person that resists change, that's very different yeah. than someone who doesn't go out and find it. If you if you foster the environment, those people will go find it. But if you foster the environment and you have someone that resists it, that can be like poison, a cancer inside it, your business. It, yep. it can. And I think that I've had to deal with that a number of times, yeah. but once to the extreme where uh, a, a particular person w- would not adapt with yeah. the time, you know, with that's for it. us, it was, it was technology okay. and, and yeah. they refused. And I likened it to, uh, let's say you're a, a, a cowboy and you're driving cattle and you've been on your horse for, you know, ever. And all of a sudden somebody goes, you know what, if we used a motorcycle, this would be so much more efficient yeah. and and faster. And in our case, it was adapting from computers to mobile products. And, you know, this person for, you know, repairs and refurbishing and stuff. And uh, this guy who's just a great guy and just a fantastic tech. And, and I love working with him. He just dug his heels and his, well, no, we're always going to have this, these things to work on. And I kept telling him, I mean, this was years before it finally happened. I said, no, you know, we're not. Yeah. This look, look where this market's going. Look at the volume difference between a computer and a phone or an iPad. I mean, just look and, and how this is going. And over time, he just refused to do it. And so we finally got to the point after a couple of years of having these discussions where it was like, hey, if there's no more of these products to work on, you can go home. Yeah. And and eventually it was like, well, call in and we'll let you know whether we have any of these products to work on. And of course, you know, he uh, went and got another job of as course. he should have. Yes, cool. yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, the should've. trick the trick and, is, you know, I've I've had that too. That not a certain, not I don't want to mince words, not yeah. at all with this guy that left earlier this year. But sure, I have sure. had this with other people in the past, and I, I don't. Well, I was going to say. I haven't recognized it early enough. I'm not sure that's true. I haven't acted on it early enough um, or as early as I, I, in retrospect, I would have wanted to, you know, I mean, usually you, some people you just can't change and then you yes. got to let them go or, you know, as you did sort of convince them, maybe it's better somewhere else. Right. But, you know, they need to find their exit somewhere or another. Uh if I look back over the last, you know, whatever, 20 plus years that I've been doing this, uh, there's probably I could probably count 10 years total of time of people that I've had people too long. You know, this person yeah, maybe for sure. an extra two years, this person for three, you yeah. know, like you said with your guy. It's like, Tough. no, as soon as you realize that this person is resisting change, you, you know, you just go. OK, that's it. Got to go. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough, man. It, but that, <laughs> it it's tough. so easy to say Ooh, when I'm not really in the scenario yeah. where I have to deal with it. Yes. Yeah. And I, I've, I mean, I've talked to so many small business owners over the years that it, it's just a, a, a story that's repeated over and over and over. It's like, yeah. well, this person, that person. And at, at some point we all get to the, to this uh, mindset. We're like, well, how does the business work without this person? You right? know what? I can speak to that now. Yeah. It yes. Works great. Well, that's what I was going to say. My answer to that question is very well. Yes. Very <laughs> and well. Sometimes. Yeah. And I can remember having to kind of migrate out a really key person. And I was like, wow, man, this is this uh, this is devastating. But over time, it 
Okay. Okay. And, and it speaks to the strength of your business and yep. your other employees. And, and I think it's better for the other employees too, because they often see what's going on with clearer eyes than we do as business owners. In, and, in some ways that's you know, certain yeah. If from, yeah, for, for certain things that is absolutely yes. true. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, the, you know, if it's that empathy you talk about, because a lot of people you think, Oh, I, I gotta be nice. I'm, or whatever cool the employees are going to see this, but a lot of the other employees are like get rid of that person. <laughs> you know, yeah. they cause all kinds of havoc or they don't want to do this or, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And, uh, Uh, So it's, it's, it's important to listen to not listen to your concerns about things not working. Right. Uh, And, and to take the plunge because as business owners too, we get too comfortable over time. So that's so true. Yeah. 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 You got to keep yourself a little scared too. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I I would love to hear, you know, your stories about, uh, you know, how did you solve, do you have, are are you a micromanager? How did you solve that problem? How do you keep change in your organization going? You know, let us know feedback at business show.co or come visit the uh, small business support group at business show.co slash Facebook. Come talk to us. Yeah, please do. This is uh, thank you for for walking me through this, Shannon. I, you actually oh, yeah. fixed some things in me today, so this is I'm good. A fixer, man. <laughs> that's a, that's what we do. That's right. That's, yeah, it. that's it. Awesome. Uh, if you have your own question, send it to us. Keep living that charmed life.